take away anything that will hinder us, that will disturb us, and that will serve as a barrier, O God, in receiving fully from you, O Lord. Father, as for your servant, I continue to humble myself down, Lord. I acknowledge that apart from you, I cannot operate. Apart from you, I cannot do anything. It is therefore, Father, I pray na give me a clean heart. Give me a pure spirit, Father God. Cleanse me from head to toe, O God, so that I will be worthy to be your vessel, O God, for the works that you have prepared this morning, so that I will be worthy to serve your will and purposes in this pulpit this morning, Father God. And Lord, we take authority over all the works of the enemy and we rebuke anything, Lord, ang aming karamdaman, ang aming panghihina, ang anumang mga disturbances, anuman, O Lord God, yung gagamitin ng kalaban, O Lord God, to withhold your presence and with your company, O God, to be felt this morning. And ganun din po, Father, to all the people tuning in online, Father God, we proclaim, Lord, victory wherever they may be, Father God. We proclaim victory um, uh, at a later times, O oh God, when these people, O oh Lord, will come across this service. This is our prayer. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Who are joyful here to be called the servant of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, in Romans chapter 6, verse 22, it says in here, my dear brothers and sisters, that we know, diba, sabi nga ni Brother Ramon kanina, even Satan, even the devil, is called the God of this world. Nasa Biblia po yan. Amen po. Even Satan, the prince of this world, the God of this world, my dear brothers and sisters. Amen. At ang sabi niya rito, all have sinned. Amen. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And whatever it is that you are serving, whatever it is that you fall under into, that becomes your master. So every sinner, my dear brothers and sisters, sabi niya rito mga kapatid, no? John 8.34, everyone who practice sin, everyone who sinned is a slave to sin. And if you are a slave to sin, who is your slave master? Satan. And, but the Lord says in here, in John uh, 8.36, that if the Son sets you free, then you are free indeed. Amen. When you receive the Lord Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, you receive your freedom. Amen. And being freed, you are indeed free. Amen. Just imagine, yung isang taong nasa death row, nag-spend siya ng 50 years doon sa death row and nabigyan ng parol. Do you think doon sa day na pakakawalan siya, he will not dwell any minute sa loob ng kulungan, magmamadaling lalabas yan. Amen. So the same thing with us, my dear brothers and sisters, who were one sinner. But when we were freed, mga kapatid, we are free indeed. Therefore, let us no longer dwell. Amen? To that bondage of sin. Amen po? Romans 6.22, it says in here, Now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves of God, the fruits that you are doing, amen, the fruits that you are doing will lead to sanctification and the end result which is eternal life in the Lord Jesus. Amen? It is talking to us po, mga Kristiyano, who received the Lord Jesus as our personal Lord and Savior who have been made born again by the quickening power of the Lord. Amen? At ang sabi niya doon, that you have not been set free from sin and have became slaves of God. Because sabi nga natin kanina, before we were slaves to our sin. 
But now we were freed by God, so we are now slave of God. Amen po. Ano ba yung definition ng slave or being slavery? Meaning mga kapatid, it is working for someone or doing the will of someone who considers you as his or her own property. Amen. Tayo, we do the work of someone. We do the will of someone sa ating mga trabaho, but they do not consider us their property. So we are not slave. Amen po. We are employee. But once there is a caveat in there that says that you are my property, and then you work for them, and then you do their order, you became a slave. But the Lord says that you are my holy people, you are my holy nation, you are my treasured possession. Amen po, mga kapatid. Is that not what the Lord says? I have chosen you, you are my holy people. Amen. You are a holy nation. So my dear brothers and sisters, no? every believer, every converted Christian, don't get me wrong when I say converted Christian, I mean through the virtue of relationship with our Lord Jesus. Amen. Kasi sa panahon ngayon, marami ng definition ng Kristiyano. But the true definition of Christian is that conversion that we receive in the virtue of accepting the Lord Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Amen po. So every Christian now becomes a servant of God. Amen. Every Christian now becomes a servant of God. At ang sabi nga natin, what is the role of a servant? By the root word, servant, what is your role? To serve. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And every servant, my dear brothers and sisters, our role is to serve. But because we are a servant of God, our role is to serve God. To serve the will and purposes of our God. Amen? Our Master, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen po. And my dear brothers and sisters sa Bible, who are servant here? Are you happy to be called the servant of God? Amen po. Amen. And as a servant of God, my dear brothers and sisters, meron pong expectation. There is an expectation sa atin. Amen. As a servant of God, there is an expectation to us. If you open your Bible, in Luke chapter 12, Verses 35 to 38, sabi niya rito, mga kapatid, servant, listen, servant of God. Amen. As a servant, be dressed ready for service. Amen. Hallelujah. Bilang isang servant, dapat pala, lagi kang handa. Amen po. No? Be dressed ready for service and keep your lamps burning. Amen. As a servant, be always ready. And as a servant, keep your lamp burning. You know, this lamp, my dear brothers and sisters, symbolizes yung faith that we profess. Amen po. No? So as a servant of God, sabi niya rito, be always ready and keep your faith on fire. Amen. Hello? Amen. Like men waiting for their master to return from a wedding banquet so that when he comes and knock, they can immediately open the door for him. It will be good for those servant whose their master find them watching when he comes. I tell you the truth. He will dress himself to serve. He will have them recline at the table and come and wait for them. It will be good for those servant whose master finds them ready, even if he comes in the second or third watch of the night. And mag-jump tayo sa verse 43, it says again, inulit niya, it will be good for that servant whom the master finds doing. So when he returns. Amen. Mga kapatid, Yan po yung expectation sa atin bilang, bilang servant is 
lagi po tayong handa. We are always dressed, ready for the service. Amen po. Hindi yung pagdating ng amo, kumakatok, sabi niya rito, second hour or third hour of the night, ibig sabihin madaling araw, kumakatok yung amo, dapat nandong ka na nakahanda to pagbuksan yung pinto. Hindi po yung, sandali lang amo, magigising lang ako, magbibihis lang, magpapalit lang ako. Hindi po ganun mga kapatid. Amen? So the expectation of being a servant is we ought to be dress ready for service. Amen po? And number two, we ought to have our lamp always lit up. Amen po? Burning yung faith natin. Amen? And kung mag-jump tayo sa Luke chapter 17, verses 7 to 10, sabi niya rito mga kapatid, again, sa ating mga servant, suppose one of you had a servant plowing or looking after the ship, would he say to the servant when he comes in from the field, come along now and sit down to it? Or would he rather say, prepare my supper, get yourself ready and wait on me while I eat and drink? After that, you may eat and drink. Would he thank the servant because he did what he was told to do? So you also, when you have done everything you were told to do, should say, we are unworthy servants. We have only done our duty. Amen. I don't know kung naintindihan po natin yung story. Let's paraphrase is, supposing that you are a servant, amen, at nagtratrabaho ka sa farm, sa field, pagod na pagod ka, uhaw na uhaw ka, nagugutom ka, and when you go home to your master's home, do you expect your master to tell you, Oy, come, sit down and I will prepare food for you. Or would you expect your master to say, tapos ka na sa field? Okay, pagluto mo na ako at nang ako'y makakain na. Amen. As a servant, would you suppose to say na, Uy, pasasalamatan ako ng master ko. And sabi niya, you are only doing your work. Amen. And I was really blessed yesterday coming to the practice nung sa music team. Dahil, uh, nga, uh, na, na notice natin na masama yung pakiramdam ni uh, Cherry. in yung exhortation niya, she exhorted herself in the Lord and she exhorted yung mga nandiritong tao din. Dahil sabi nga niya, masama yung pakiramdam niya. And to be honest, even at a last minute, she asked people to stand in place of her. But the conviction of the Lord is, bakit ka tatayo dun? Tatayo ka ba dun because mabuti ang pakiramdam mo? Tatayo ka ba dun because you have a song to sing? Or tatayo ka doon because as a servant, that is your duty and your purpose. Amen. And even Sister Mary Ann, on Friday, na magpapa-Bible study, masamang-masama din yung pakiramdam niya. Na even at a last minute, ako ba talaga, Pastor, ang magpapa-Bible study? But she realized, ang nga kapatid, na hindi siya magpapa-Bible study dahil mabuti ang kanyang pakiramdam. But that is her duty to serve. Amen. Tayo mga kapatid, why are we here in the church? There are a lot of reason to encourage us to come to church. But the prime reason is, we are here to worship the Lord. We are here to serve the Lord. Amen, my dear brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. No? As a servant, my dear brothers and sisters, that is our rule. Amen. To serve our master. Amen po. And I want us to look at the story, the life of King David. I'm sure, mga kapatid, that we can all relate with this. Especially now, na winter times is here, mga kapatid. Especially now na winter times is here, there are a lot of reason, mga kapatid, na manlamig. There are a lot of reason to be frustrated. 
There will be a lot of reason to be upset, mga kapatid. But I want us to study the life of King David. Pagbuksan po natin yung Psalms chapter 40. Amen. And tignan po natin yung example na pinakita ni King David sa atin. Amen po. Sabi niya rito mga kapatid, Psalms chapter 40. Siguro hindi natin matatapos yung chapter 40. Let's see kung saan tayo matapos. Sabi niya rito mga kapatid, I waited patiently for the Lord. And He turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud in the mire. He set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. He put a new song in my heart. He put a new song in my mouth, rather. A hymn of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. Wow. It was an awesome psalm, mga kapatid. You know, if you digest that, no? Kung i-digest natin yun, kung inintindi natin yun, mga kapatid, it is an awesome, awesome passage. And dito, mga kapatid, ipinapakita niya sa atin that there is a great blessed result of waiting patiently for the Lord. Amen. There is a great blessing. There is a great result of waiting patiently for the Lord. Amen. In as a servant, dapat jan tayo nag-excel. Remember, yung passage natin, Luke chapter twelve, verse thirty-five. Our role, mga kapatid, is be dressed ready for service, waiting for our master. Amen. And sabi ni David dito, tutoo yan. I agree with that passage. Kasi ito yung testimony ko. Kasi ito yung nangyari sa akin, King David says. I waited patiently for the Lord. And by waiting patiently for the Lord, what did the Lord do to me? He turned to me and heard my cry. Amen. In other translation, it says in there, He inclined to me and heard my cry, my dear brothers and sisters. Mga kapatid, napakalaki ng pagkakaiba ng waiting versus patiently waiting. Amen. Waiting, my dear brothers and sisters, yan yung mga may kadate ka, at feeling mo na injan ka after 30 minutes kang naghintay, after one hour kang naghintay, hindi dumating yung kadate mo, umuwi ka na. Yan po yung waiting. Amen. Yan yung naghihintay ka sa pharmacy ng gamot, nangyari sa akin ito. And I only have 35 minutes to be exact to wait. But it took longer than that. So umalis na ako sa pila dahil wala na akong time maghintay. That is waiting, my dear brothers and sisters. Waiting, you can cancel it anytime. Waiting, you can cancel it anytime. So there is a big difference of waiting and patiently waiting. Amen? If you are waiting, you are relying on facts. You are relying sa mga impormasyon na alam mo, impormasyon na in control ka. But if you are patiently waiting, you are relying on faith. Amen. If you are waiting, you rely on the natural. But if you are patiently waiting, you rely on the supernatural. Amen, mga kapatid. Hello. Hallelujah. So David said, I was patiently waiting for the Lord. Bakit patiently waiting? Kasi mukhang yung Panginoon hindi nakikinig. 
you know, if you look at the the preceding Psalms, and daming chances na sinabi ni David doon na, Lord, I am patiently waiting. You know that song? Waiting here for you with my hands lifted high and praise. Isa yan sa mga Psalms na binitawan ni David. But David is patiently waiting to the Lord, for the Lord. Patiently waiting, my dear brothers and sisters, kasi it seems na walang kasagutan. It seems that the Lord is quiet. It seems that hindi niya nakukuha. It seems na walang ebidensya sa mga gusto niyang mangyari, mga kapatid. But ano yung sabi niya doon? He was patiently waiting for the Lord. Amen. Mga kapatid, kung anuman yung dasal mo, anuman yung iniiiyak mo sa Panginoon, at alam mo naman that your heart's motive is right, continue to patiently wait for the Lord. Do not give up. Amen. Some people in the Bible, they have waited seven years. The Israelites in Egypt, they were waiting for 400 years of their bondage. Mga kapatid, whatever it is that you are waiting, na hindi mo nakikita yung ebidensya, hindi mo nararanasan yung ebidensya, the Lord says, continue to patiently wait for me. Amen. You know, mga kapatid, if you patiently wait for the Lord, what will happen? David said, the Lord inclined to me. That is what you want to do. You know, kung may kausap kang tao, and yung taong ito, he inclined to you, what does that symbolize? You have their attention. Amen. Kung nag-uusap kayo at yung tao, he inclined to you. That means na you have their attention. That means na interesado siya sa sinasabi mo. That means na gusto kanyang pakinggan. That means na nire-respeto kanya. Basic communication 101. Amen. And my dear brothers and sisters, if you patiently wait, the Lord will incline to you. The Lord will incline to you because David said, He heard my cry. Amen. Dahil gusto kanyang pakinggan. Amen, church. The Lord wants to listen to you. All you need to do is patiently wait. Amen, my dear brothers and sisters. And yan yung gusto nating mangyari. For the Lord to incline in our cry. For us to catch the attention of the Lord. Amen? Because once you catch the attention of the Lord, Jeremiah 29.12, it says in there, You will call upon me and come and pray to me and I will incline to you. I will listen to you. Proverbs 15.29 The Lord is far from the wicked but He inclined to the prayers of the righteous. He listened to the prayers of the righteous. Psalms 145.19 He will incline to the desire of those who fear Him. He will also incline to their cry and will save them. Meaning He will listen. Amen. He will pay attention, my dear brothers and sisters. Whatever mountains that you are facing, whatever mountains of adversary, the mountain of pain, the mountain of sickness, the mountain of illness, the mountain of frustration, the mountain of depression, if you have a faith as small as the mustard seed, the Lord said, if you have no doubt, you can command that mountain to move. You can command that mountain to be cast out in the sea. And it will be 
move. But if it did not move today, and it did not move tomorrow, patiently wait. Amen. Patiently wait, my dear brothers and sisters. Sabi niya rito, When I patiently wait to the Lord, He turned to me, He inclined to me, and heard my cry. And look what happened. The blessed result of patiently waiting. David said, He lifted me out of the slimy pit. What are the purposes of pit in your life? If you fall into one, where will you end up into? The bottom. Amen. So anything in your life that is trying to put you down, anything in your life that, that is trying to put you down in the bottom. My dear brothers and sisters, the Lord says, patiently wait. Amen. Deuteronomy 28, 13. The Lord will make you the head and not the tail. So if you fall into that pit, the Lord will not allow you to fall down in the bottom. But the Lord will always allow you to stay afloat of those pit. Amen? As you patiently wait for the Lord, David said, He lifted me out of that pit that was intended to put me down in the bottom. Amen? David said, my dear brothers and sisters, He took me out of the mud in mire. Mud in mire, ito yung kumunoy. If you step in a kumunoy, it will not take time and you will realize that you are standing in an unstable surface. Amen? But my dear brothers and sisters, every instability in your life, if you wait patiently to the Lord, it says in there, He will set your feet on a rock in which no other than Jesus. Amen? And that rock will serve as a firm foundation. Will serve us as firm stepping stone. Amen? Hello, church? Sabi niya rito, when all this happened, the blessed result of patiently waiting, David said in verse 3, He put a new song in my heart. He put a new song in my mouth. Amen. A hymn of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. Amen. People like David who were delivered from that miry clay. People like David who were drawn from that pit, my dear brothers and sisters, the Lord has equipped you a brand new song. My dear brothers and sisters, what did you receive? What did you receive? What did you receive? Sabi ni Brother Ramon, testimony. Amen? If the Lord has lifted you up from that pit, if the Lord has set your feet in a strong foundation, what did you receive? If those mountains were cast out and moved, the Lord has equipped you with testimony. And what do you do with those testimony? You need to share it to others. David, in as much as this is a psalm, a song of David, this is David's testimony. Psalms 107, you know that song, Let the redeem of the Lord say so. Amen. Let the redeem of the Lord say so. Let the redeem of the Lord say so. I'm redeemed, I'm redeemed. Praise the Lord. Amen. So my dear brothers and sisters, if you have been lifted up from that pit, if the Lord has put you in a firm foundation, testify for the Lord. Amen? 
testify for the Lord. Yun po yung mga testimony na mga kapatid sabi niya rito that others will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. Amen. Yun po yung mga powerful testimony. Hindi lang po yung nagpupuri ako sa Panginoon kasi pinagaling niya ako. Bakit kung hindi ka pala gumaling, hindi ka makakapagpuri sa Panginoon? Hindi lang po yung salamat sa uh, promotion. Salamat sa dagdag sahod sa Panginoon. Glory to God. Bakit kung walang promotion, kung walang dagdag sahod, hindi ka makakapag-glory to God? So my dear brothers and sisters, to all who were delivered, to all who were redeemed, to all who have their prayers answered, the Lord has given you a testimony. Amen. And that testimony, my dear brothers and sisters, sing that for the Lord. Amen. Kaya nga, may mga kantang lumabas, mga kapatid. Hindi ko alam kung familiar kayo dun sa, ka, uh, sa kanta. Ano, antiquity pa ito kasi bata pa ako kinakanta namin to Yung hinto at yung pakinggan ang ginawa ng Diyos sa akin. Hinto at yung pakinggan ang ginawa ng Diyos sa akin. Alam natin yung kanta na yun. Pinatawad ang kasalanan ko. Nilinis ako at naging bago. Hinto. That is a testimony. But the Lord is equipping you a new song in your mouth. Amen po, my dear brothers and sisters. Amen? Remember Obed Edom? Na topic na natin ito dati. Amen? When no one would welcome the Ark of the Covenant, only Obed Edom was available to welcome it. And the Lord blessed Obed Edom. And Obed Edom was singing and praising and jumping to the Lord. Nasabi niya rito, come and see. Hali kayo at tignan ninyo kung paano akong pinagpala ng Panginoon. Amen. Ano yung nangyari? Nakita siya ni David. In yung takot sa puso ni David, napalitan yun ng excitement. Kaya nga siya, even just wearing an ephod, see through. He was praising and jumping to the Lord. Amen. Duma doon, lumabas yung sabi ni David na, I can be undignified para sa aking Panginoon. Amen. Iano kung ang title ko hindi presidente. Iano kung ang title ko servant. Kung ang master ko naman ay ang Panginoon. Amen. Hallelujah, my dear brothers and sisters. Sabi niya rito, verse 4, Blessed is the man who makes the Lord his trust, who does not look to the proud, to those who turn aside to false gods. Many, O Lord my God, are the wonders you have done, the things you have planned for us. No one can recount to you were I to speak and tell of them, they would be too many to declare. So my dear brothers and sisters, kanina sabi ni Haring David as a testimony, this is the blessed result of waiting patiently for the Lord. But now this time sabi naman ni King David, mga kapatid, this is the blessed result of trusting God. Amen. This is the blessed result of trusting God. Sabi ni David, Blessed is the man who makes the Lord his trust. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, church, as you trust in the Lord. Amen po. You know, the only reason that we can patiently wait is because we trust God. Amen. Amen. The only reason that you can wait for someone is because you have trust on them. If you do not have trust that they will turn up, paghihintay ka ba? Hindi ka nga pupunta sa tagpuan, di po ba? 
If you are not convicted, if you do not have trust that they will turn up. But the only reason that we can wait patiently for the Lord is because we trust God. And it says in there, Blessed are you if you trust the Lord. Amen. If you trust the Lord and you do not put your trust or you do not look at the proud, you do not look at those who turn aside to false gods. This being proud and false god, my dear brothers and sisters, it symbolizes anything in our lives that we set contrary to God. Anything in our lives that we set equal to God. Anything in our lives that we set alongside God. Sa ating layman's term, anything that takes the space of the Lord in our lives is called our mini-gods. It's called our idols. Amen, my dear brothers and sisters. Anything that takes the place of God in our lives. What are these, mga kapatid? Sickness. Karamdaman, sakit. Our health. Our comfort. Our pride. Our personality. Our family. Our fame. Our wealth. Material things, our profession, our career, among others. Sa lahat po that we put our trust into apart from the Lord. Amen. Amen, church. I agree. I agree that there are a lot of reason, reasonable reasons for you not to be in the church. But ask yourself, is that the will of the Lord in your life? No. Amen. So my dear brothers and sisters, blessed are you if you put your trust in the Lord. Amen. Kasi wala pong rason for us not to trust in the Lord. Give me one reason. Give me even at least one reason for us not to trust the Lord. Find me one reason. And you might even convert me. But my dear brothers and sisters, sabi niya rito mga kapatid, Blessed is the man who makes the Lord his trust, who does not look to the proud, to those who turn aside to false gods. Mga kapatid, we have no reason not to trust God. Listen, pay attention here. Many, O Lord, my God, are the wonders you have done. Marami ka mga Panginoon, mga ginawang kamangha-mangha. Amen. Isa lang po ang nakakagawa ng mga kamangha-mangha. And that is no other than the Lord. Amen. Maraming ginawa ang Panginoon ng mga kamangha-mangha. The things you planned for me. The thoughts, your thoughts of me, sabi ni King David, no one can recount to you. No? Hindi ko mabibilang, hindi ko mabibilang yung kabutihan mo sa buhay ko. Hindi ko mabibilang yung mga magagandang plano mo sa buhay ko. If I am to write them, hindi ko masusulat lahat. If I am to think and remember them, hindi ko maaalala lahat. Amen. Walang rason na hindi tayo magtiwala sa Panginoon, mga kapatid. Many are the wonders you have done. The things you planned for me or your thoughts of me, no one can recount to you. Were I to speak and tell of them, they would be too many to declare. Amen. Kung tatayo ako rito at susubukan kong sabihin yung kabutihan ng Panginoon, hindi ko masasabi lahat. Marami akong hindi maaalala. Kulang yung oras. My dear brothers and sisters. Amen. Saan ka pa magtitiwala kung di sa tested? Amen, church. Kung bibili ka ng shampoo, 
Kapag ginamit mo yung shampoo na yan, umayos yung buhok mo. Gumanda yung buhok mo. Tested na. Sa susunod na bibili ka ng shampoo, the same na shampoo yung bibilhin mo. Amen. Hello? Ganon din po ang Panginoon. Tested na natin ang Panginoon. Bakit hindi tayo magtitiwala? Bakit hindi tayo magtitiwala sa Panginoon when in fact, the Lord is tested already? Amen po. Your thoughts towards us, my dear brothers and sisters, no? ang thoughts ng Panginoon towards us. Believe me, my dear brothers and sisters, mas maraming plano ang Panginoon sa iyo. Mas maraming magagandang kaisipan at plano ang Panginoon sa iyo kaysa sa plano mo sa buhay mo. Amen. We always try to plan. We always try to steer our life. But mga kapatid, hindi natin maa-outdo yung plano ng Panginoon sa atin. All we need to do is trust. All we need to do is, Panginoon, ipagkatiwala ko sa iyo. Ang prayer natin, mga kapatid, is sa araw-araw is, hindi yung Panginoon, ito yung plano ko. Panginoon, i-bless mo yung plano ko. Yung prayer natin sa araw-araw is, Panginoon, kung ano yung plano mo sa akin ngayong araw na to, I yield, I surrender. Let your will be done, Panginoon. Amen po, my dear brothers and sisters. Ang Panginoon lang ay may kakayahan na magplano sa iyo, Jeremiah 29.11. I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you. Plans to give you a hope and, not a, fu- and a future. Plans not to harm you. Amen. Hello, my dear brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Amen. Kung tao ang nagplaplano, it is doomed to fail. But if you let the Lord, your planner, if you put your trust in the Lord, di ba sabi niya dito, many are the plans of man, but all of them fails. Because only the plan of the Lord prevails. Amen po, mga kapatid. Amen. So mga kapatid, dito nakita natin na there is a blessing in waiting patiently for the Lord and there is a blessing in putting our trust in the Lord. Amen po. Isa na lang and then we will continue next time. Verse 6. Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but my ears you have pierced. Burnt offering and sin offering you did not require. Then I said, here I am. I have come. It is written about me in the scroll. I desire to do your will, O my God, and your law is within my heart. Now that's a very important na matapos natin yun dahil that is the title of our message. That as a servant, our purpose, we have come to serve the will of our master. Amen po, mga kapatid. In kung makikita natin dito, mga kapatid, sabi niya rito, Here I am. I have come. Amen. So my dear brothers and sisters, ang hinahanap ng Panginoon is that willing servant. Amen po. The willing servant. Di ba mga kapatid, the law before, if you belong, say for example, if you belong to the kingdom of Hampshire and inataki tayo ng kingdom of Sari, natalo tayo, lahat mga kapatid ng tao sa Hampshire will become a subject of the kingdom of Sari. That's how kingdom works before. Amen. Even if it is against your will, you have no choice. Amen. That's the same na you were a servant of sin. But you, when you were forgiven, you became a servant of the Lord. But sabi niya rito, you become a servant of the Lord. It is not against your will, but a willing servant. Amen. 
The Lord is after a willing servant, my dear brothers and sisters. Luke 12.35, ano yung obligasyon ng isang servant? Be dressed, ready for service. Keep your lamp burning. And you can only do that if you are willing Kung may conviction sa puso mo. Amen po, mga kapatid. Amen. A servant can only be constantly ready for service in constantly keeping their lamps burning if there is willingness in his or her own heart. Amen, my dear brothers and sisters. If a servant has a willingness in his or her own heart. He can claim in stand 2 Timothy 4.2 that says, I am prepared in season or out of season. Amen. Sino ba ang hindi dumaraan sa pagsubok? Sino ba ang hindi dumadaan? Mga kapatid sa panghihina. But if there is a willingness in your heart, you can say that, Lord, I am your servant. In season or out of season, I will serve you. Amen, my dear brothers and sisters. If you have a willing heart, that's the time that you can claim 1 Corinthians 9.16 like Apostle Paul that, Woe to me if I cannot serve you, O Lord. Amen. Woe to me if I cannot serve you, O Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. The Lord is after a willing heart. The Lord is after a willing servant, mga kapatid. Wala pong pinipilit ang Panginoon. Amen. You know, this is a wonderful passage. You know why? Because it prophetically foretell the coming Jesus Christ. Kung titignan natin, sabi niya rito mga kapatid, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire. These are the sacrifices, the burnt sacrifice. These are the offering that people of all give. But my ears you have pierced. Burnt offering and sin offering you did not require. And sabi niya rito, Here I am, I have come, it is written about me in your scroll. I desire to do your will, oh my God. Your law is within my heart. My dear brothers and sisters, it prophetically tells the life of Jesus Christ who came, who willingly took on the role of a servant. Jesus Christ is Himself God. Alam po natin yun, amen? Jesus Christ is the King of Kings. Jesus Christ has the name that is above every name. But what did he do? He willingly came to become the lowest of the lowliest servant. He was born not in the palace, but in a manger. He was born not in a, 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 a kutsun, but in a hay, my dear brothers and sisters. He suffered. He has the power to snatch his fingers and everyone will fall down and ask for forgiveness. But he suffered as a servant, my dear brothers and sisters. No? Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has full-heartedly and willingly do the will of the Father. Amen po? And in John 13, 15, the Lord said, I have set you an example that you will do as I have done for you. Amen. The Lord Jesus Christ during that time was sharing about servanthood, how to serve. Remember during the time when he kneeled down to the feet of the apostles and start washing their feet? That washing the feet of the someone is the lowest job of a servant. You are lucky kung ang role mo, tagaluto ka. But if you are there, in the lowest position, 
washing every feet na bisita ng iyong amo. That's the lowest job of a servant. But Jesus Christ took that role. And Jesus Christ said, I have set you an example for you to follow. Serve, my dear brothers and sisters. Amen. As a servant, we ought to be in a position, Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, that a servant he who can offer his or her body as a living sacrifice, pleasing, holy, and acceptable to God. Amen. A servant who does not conform to the pattern of this world. Amen, my dear brothers and sisters. And sabi niya rito, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but my ears you have pierced. As a servant, mga kapatid, it is very important that our ears are pierced. In other translation, it says in there, you opened my ears. As a servant, ang pinaka-importanting quality, if you are applying to be a servant, ang pinaka-importanting quality, hindi po are you college graduate, do you have a pleasing personality, do you come from a good background. If you are applying for the role of a servant, isa lang po yung quality na kailangan mo. That you have a pierce ear. Pierce ear, my dear brothers and sisters, you have the quality to listen attentively. Nakikinig ka sa Panginoon. Dahil as a servant, your role is wait for instruction. Wait kung ano yung ipagagawa ng amo mo, ng master mo. How can you do the will of your master if you did not hear the instruction? How can you do the order of the master kung hindi mo alam yung kanyang iniuutos? How would you know? How would you hear kung hindi ka nakikinig? Paano mo makaka- mapapakinggan kung maski clear na yung pagkakasabi pero nagbibingi-bingihan ka? Kaya nga sabi niya rito, pierce my ear. Lord, wag mo lang buksan ang puso ko. Kundi Lord, buksan mo rin yung tainga ko. Upang sa ganun, Father God, hindi lang yung magaan sa puso ko yung gusto kong naririnig. Hindi lang po mga kapatid yung madaling madigest ang gusto kong marinig. Sometimes mga kapatid, in order for the work to work powerfully in your life, you need to be willing to open your ears sa kung ano man yung sasabihin ng Panginoon. Amen. So as a servant, it is very important for us to have a pierced ear. Amen. This is the quality of a servant that we need. Amen, church, mga kapatid. Amen. Sabi niya rito, sacrifice in offering you did not desire, burnt offering in sin offering you did not require. I said, here I am. I have come. It is written about me in your scroll. I desire to do your will, oh my God. Your law is within my heart. Amen. Mga kapatid, no? Panginoon, serving you is not an act of sacrifice. Serving you is not my act of offering. My dear brothers and sisters, dapat bilang isang servant, my dear brothers and sisters, Dapat bilang isang kristyano, hindi tayo pumupunta sa church dahil this is our sacrifice, Lord. Dapat every time that we give our offering, give our tithes, hindi po, Lord, ito po yung fruits ng aking sakripisyo. Ito po yung aking offering. Sabi niya rito mga kapatid, Lord, this is my purpose. Amen. Panginoon, serving you is not act of sacrifice, it is not my act of offering. But here I am. I am all ears. I have come to serve you. Amen? Because I desire to do your will. Amen? 
I desire to do your will. And your will is low in my heart. Your will is within my heart. Amen, mga kapatid. Meaning, it's an act of love. Amen po. It is an act of love. Great love that Jesus gave to us by taking on that position of a lowly servant. The least that we can do, my dear brothers and sisters, is to take on that love. Cloth that love. And show that as well to others. Amen po? Amen. So as a servant, my dear brothers and sisters, we have come to do the will of the Father. And when you say we have come to do the will of the Father, willingly and full-heartedly. Amen po? So my dear brothers and sisters, let's stop there. And there is an invitation that the Lord are looking for a willing servant. Amen po? Amen. And if you are indeed delivered, you are qualified. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise you, Lord. Let's stand up and let's, uh, it's the first Sunday of um, the week today. Let us observe communion. Hallelujah, Lord. Music team, mayroon ba tayong ano? Hallelujah. Volunteer artist. Asher. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Okay, let us pray for these elements and for these sisters. Most gracious Lord and Heavenly Father, our Heavenly Master, Savior Jesus Christ, thank you for allowing us this wonderful opportunity and privilege to partake of your body, a memory that you have left us to do, to observe and to practice until the day that you come. Father, we entrust unto you this raw element, Father God, that symbolizes the body and blood of your son, Jesus. Cleanse them at their raw form. Sanctify them for the purposes that you have installed for us today. Lord, I entrust to you the life of our dearly beloved brethren, Sister Annie and Sister Mary and Lord. Give them a clean hands. Give them a pure heart so that even us, they will distribute this element, Lord, supernaturally. It will be as if we are receiving them directly from the hand of your son, Jesus. Hallelujah. And church, let us take this wonderful opportunity to serve the Lord by worshiping Him and prepare our heart ready to receive that communion.
For I received from the Lord what I also pass on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night He was betrayed, took bread, and when He had given thanks, He broke it and said, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's partake of the bread. same way after supper, he took a cup of wine saying, This is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. This is the cup in the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and this drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until He comes. Let's drink the cup. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you so much that you have accepted us as your servants in your service to do the will of our Master, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And therefore, Father, Having been taken the role of a servant, Father God, to the life-redeeming power of that relationship that we have in your Son, Jesus, Father, we pray that you help us to constantly be dressed ready for your service, Father God. To constantly Allow our lamp of faith burning. Lord, a servant is not free of any challenges. There is the challenge of pain. There is the challenge of comfort. There is the challenge of wealth. There is the challenge of finances, material things. There is a challenge, Father God, of our professions. There is the challenge, Father God, of our dreams, ideals, and aspirations. But Lord, whatever challenges there may be, Father God, teach us to patiently wait for you. Teach us to constantly trust in you. Teach us to maintain that spirithood of willingness, Father God, to serve you. Lord, 
we may never be enough for all the wonderful things that you have done. We may never be enough to all your promises, to all your plans in us. But Lord, the best, Father God, the only thing that we can offer is our commitment, Father God, to continuously position our lives, ourselves, Father God, in your feet. Thank you, Father God, because as a servant, Lord, our greatest accolade, Father God, is to be in your feet. Because that is where the most honorable position is, to be in the feet of the Master. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you have considered us and accepted us as a servant. Father, may we be able to willingly and faithfully act, O God, in that role, to do the will, your will, Father God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We know, Lord, that you are not finished yet. We know, Father, that you are going, Lord, to meet the needs of your people even as they patiently wait for you and trust in you. Father God, go home with them. Holy Spirit, go home with your people. Holy Spirit, enter the life of your people. Enter the circumstances of your people, Father God. Holy Spirit, teach your people to endure and to wait patiently. Especially with this situation at the moment, with this looming Omicron variant again, Father God, and all other organisms and all other microbes in there. But Lord, though 10,000 will be afflicted in our right-hand side and 100,000 in our left-hand side, but Father, thank you that you will preserve your servants. Thank you that there is a remnant that you will preserve, O God. A remnant, Father, who is willing to give their testimony. Who is willing, Father, to proclaim that brand new song in their mouth. In order for all the hearers, Father, to be able to be convicted, Father. To be able, Father God, to be uh, convicted in honoring and trusting you. Thank you, Lord, for your good and wonderful countenance to your church, to all the people who were joining us online. Thank you for the overflow. Thank you for the release. Come on, church. Let's honor the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Let's honor the Lord. Let's honor the Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We are your servant, Father. And as a servant, we have come to do your will. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Awesome, awesome God. Awesome, awesome Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let all the servants of God give the Lord a clap offering. The best that a servant can offer. Thank you, Lord, and God bless you, my dear brothers and sisters. Praise God. Manatili po tayong nakatayo and let us proclaim. Ibalik po natin sa Panginoon ang lahat ng papuri at pagsamba. Amen! Praise God! Hallelujah! Let us all declare.